Hello, this is Caleb, and today I'll be showing you my 123 d design project. This is pretty much just a, a basic model of a motor without the intake and out the, without the heads on one side and all that whatnot. What I was aiming for here was to just to kind of show what some of the major areas are on a motor. You know, once again, without the intake, because my computer just couldn't handle it. Every time I tried to draft it, it'd lock up the computer. It actually happened quite often while I was doing this whole thing, but I got a lot else with what I was aiming for, you know, intakes and all that for coolant, timing cover, camshaft, uh, oil pan filter, all the bearings for the crank, exhaust, heads, valve cover, you know, piston. I didn't put a con rod in there because, you know, there's not much to a con rod. But what I learned here is that drafting can be somewhat more time consuming than what I take it for because on a lot of my smaller projects it didn't take me quite as long. But when it came to this it seemed to be much more time consuming. I mean just this rear end on the motor here was multiple days to get it to how I vaguely wanted it. Because the Autodesk went through their design here it's, it's a free product but with free come you pay the price of a free product essentially there's not everything you want exactly to be there and it's not as user-friendly as you might like there's a lot of things I still don't know how to do <clears throat> and I'm still learning with projects like this I mean I'd love to maybe play with SolidWorks one day but that's expensive maybe in college I don't know but yeah I learned that drafting is much more time-consuming than people make it out to be and really what you're looking at is all there is. I didn't draft internal parts since this isn't a cutaway. And it would be nice, but much more complicated to make a cutaway model of anything. Definitely since internal parts, it's hard to get measurements because I'd have to strip down a motor because nobody just puts those online. When I did my own set of valve covers in the past, it took me forever just to find dimensions of a valve cover to make that, and they still didn't end up fully accurate. Because this, this one, I just kind of made it proportional and eyeballed it. But, yeah, from that, I, I learned a lot with that. But, yeah, the mistakes I made were just not using the proper machine. If I would have been using a more powerful computer, I probably could have got some kind of intake manifold on here. But every time I tried to draft it, you know, I'd draw up just rectangles and all that. For like the carb base and then I draw up all the intakes leading up to that but once I got all that up I'd extrude it and I'd go to bevel it off to make it flush and then right when I do that it frees up and I wanted that about two or three times before I just decided I think I can just do without since I have a perfectly valid reason but that is essentially all that's there I, I would have loved to get more detail kind of on my exhaust, but once again, I'm learning with this. I don't quite know how to do it yet, and I'm once again, I'm limited by the program I'm using, but once I learn more, I hope to make much better products and eventually get to where I can print small parts for these and cast them, because I've seen it done before, and I would love to do that, but this is my motor, basic motor model.